Hello, hello, a Mark and Dark here. Hope you guys are doing great today. So for today's tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to make collision or go models. The tools you'll need for this process is Outfit Studio, Nifscope, Fallout 4 Edit, and Elrich, more specifically, to convert the models to actual collision-based drop models. From there, let's get started. Alrighty, as you can see, we're now in Outfit Studio. We have our model loaded up. It's important to note that you need to activate this little square on the left hand side. This allows you to see the ground and where it is placed, but I recommend disabling it while you're manipulating the mesh to move it to the area you want it to move. So first things first, you want to decide what part of the models you want to delete. Obviously this is a mashup, so it's not entirely, I'm not going to put this as a collision. Instead, I'm going to make it look a little nicer. So instead, I'm just going to start deleting the head mesh that I have for this character. From there, we can delete, disable the gloves the watch or everything about the watch I could say more specifically as well as the wrists while we're at it uh, and the wrist should be up here somewhere there it is nice so now we can also disable the boots too because we don't need that uh, I'm thinking of disabling the belt as well wherever that belt is located there it is so now we separated the meshes to parts we want. So first I would recommend separating, disabling everything like this and then just doing one by one. So for example, uh, we're gonna move the shirts, belts and pants together. So we're gonna do the ground trick. So you can see this is the ground. This is where the camera is gonna rotate in the inventory. So you just wanna rotate it to the direction you want it to. I recommend rotating it to the side like this and then moving it down to the ground. Now, as soon as you can touch it to the ground, that's what I recommend. So from there, what you can do is now just compress it, make it look like it's like flattened on the ground. And I will move the shirt on top of it to make it look like uh, it's like folded on top of it or something like that. So obviously it's at your, your discretion what you want to do. Anything works. As you can see, it's something like what I want. Nothing too particular, but you know, this mashup might be forever private, so I'm not too worried about it. So next is the AVS. We wanna move the AVS kind of to the side. I, I'm, I'm thinking about it to making it seem like it's like a full loadout kit that's just placed. It's sort of folded and placed on like a layout. So that's what I'm probably gonna do. Something like that, looks good to me. Next is the helmet. We wanna move the helmet to the side here. We're gonna do the same like we did with the AVS belt. We can move it to the side right here. Make it look like it's laid out, you know? Have you seen those like pictures? Down a little bit more. So what we could do, just to make sure everything lines up correctly, it's not like floating. Down a little bit, so it clips into the ground. Um, let me put the helmet a little bit up. It just looks a little nicer. And let's move the AVS belt, the AVS kit more specifically. A little lower, so. There you go. Looks, looks fine and dandy to me. So next, last, is the slingshot. I'm gonna put this near the foot area. I think this is kind of be the best little spot for this. Just wanna rotate. Oh. Keep rotating it. Put it on the ground like this. Make it look like it's a part of the kit. Just a little bit out the way from the from the radio. Perfect. You know what? I like it. It kind of seems more genuine. So and now you have placed your mesh on the ground to make it look like what you want it to be. Obviously, from this tutorial, you kind of want to decide what's going to have collision, what's not going to have collision. I will probably make the helmet 
collision based did uniform collision based this collision based as well as this this is important to note if you have like multiple meshes you could just combine it together it will just act as like one main i guess piece you could say so from there you want to export it so file export to nif and you want to select the nif name that you copied from but you just want to name it like this go so from there you can easily know identify what is a drop model or a global object more specifically and you could just change it from there so let it save because there's so many mesh meshes in here so it's going to take a little while for it to save so just give it a second all right as you can see we have saved our file so that is that's it for preparing our mesh to be actually saved as a collision next step would be actually adding the collisions all right as you can see we're now in nif scope and we're ready to create the global object before doing anything we need to add a bs uh a bs flag so click insert right click the main node click block hover over block hover over insert click insert hover over Bethesda, and then click bs bsx flag from there click that yellow flag that's right at that yellow white flag so from there you want to click that integer data where you see that white flag click it click havoc click articulated click dynamic by uh bit one bit six bit seven and click accept from there click your main node where you see the num extra data list turn that to one and press that green refresh icon a new entity should show up right below it called extra data list you want to press one press enter now you can see that the bs flag has now been inside that main node and you're ready to make collisions before starting, I recommend clicking the pressing the show collision button right next to the show axis. Click it, and now you're ready to make collision. I'm gonna do this. I yeah, havoc, hover over havoc, create convex shape, and you see where the zones you want to select it to. Just select to whatever you want. I personally recommend keeping the same values. And you can see, as soon as this uh, stops loading, you can see that the collision has been made, and this is where the object will kind of collide with other objects in the real game world i recommend keeping it the same so next i'm going to do the radio so i'm just going to do the same havoc create convex shape click ok let it load and then you see it will ask you if you want to combine it yes you want to combine it don't replace it because you want this as one massive collision you can see that the collisions were added and then from there you want to select the radio the main whiplash create the convex shape click ok Click yes, add to the collision. Okay, you can see the collisions are being added. I'm not gonna do the uniform because the collisions don't properly render with this, so I would have to re-output it. If this does happen where the collision is sort of below it, I recommend ex exporting this uh, object and re-importing it. So you have to export it as OBJ and then re-import it as an OBJ. And you have to redo the weight paints and stuff. It's very annoying. That's why I decided to leave it. Instead, I'm just gonna do the collisions on the helmet and such. So the same thing, you click it, click Havoc, create convex shape, click OK. Let it load, you want to click yes, click yes, and then I'm going to do the night vision as well. Yes, click OK, and then the last, and but not least, the strap, OK. So now you're done with creating the collision. As you can see, the collision models have been made and all you have to do now from there is to reorder the blocks. So you wanna move all the way up, close this down. You wanna click spells, sanitize, and reorder blocks. And then that's it, you're ready to save it. So click this little disc icon, click save. And that star where you see that NIF should go away. All right, as you can see, it has been saved. All you have to do now is exit. Alrighty, as you can see, now we're in Elric, the Bethesda Asset Optimizer. This essentially allows you to actually make it as a droppable global model. When you get into the software, you need to select the output directory to wherever you want to output it. And you want to click Convert Files. So from there, you want to go to your where that uh, the object is located. So mine's in my mashup folder. You want to click the global model. And you can see if it turns green and shows 100% and does not force close, you have done the step, the NIF scope step correctly. And if it closes and it's blue, 
and it closes the app, you have done something incorrectly. I recommend what I've done this error plenty of times is forget to reorder the blocks. That is a very important step or it doesn't do it correctly. When it's green and it shows you that green icon and it says 100%, you're ready to go. And now what you have to do is open up the actual mod itself. Blur, click meshes, go down to where your global model is. You wanna now go to where that output folder you put in. So mine is an Elric output. You just wanna move that over and then replace it. And now that is a actual collision based entity. Now for our next step, we need to create the, allow the ESP to actually read it. So you want to click uh, fall off or edit and you just want to run the application. The step should be pretty simple. It's nothing too hard. So you go to CAG to gatekeepers, which is my ESP name. Now you want to click that plus icon, go to armor add on where you see all your other armors. You want to go to where you see, you see, this is the world model. So when you equip it, this is what it will come with. So you want to go to armor. I want to go to Goro Takamura. I recommend copying the actual address for this where you place the sniff. You want to copy and click OK. Go to talk, uh, the Goro Takamura mesh, mesh or whatever the armor uh, ID is. You want to click this model file name. You want to click it, edit, paste it. But now remember we did that go. So it's very easy naming convention. Click OK. And then from there, you want to click save. Click OK once again. It's done saving. So I'll see you in game and see if it works. All right, guys, as you can see, we're now in game. We're gonna open up the ESP menu and look up if it works. So we're gonna go to in the inventory search menu. As you can see, it's movable and it does work. I had to modify the mesh a little bit. There was too many meshes. So just keep in mind that there is a limit of how many meshes you can have. From what I believe, it just crashed on desktop uh, when I loaded up and I would inspect. So, but now it works. Now we're gonna see if we could drop it. If you could like play around with it, I guess. And look at that, that has collisions. Shoot it, it moves around as it should. There you go. That's how you do it, guys. That's how you make collision models for your mashups, armor mods, whatever the case may be. All right. Let me know if you guys have any questions in the comment section below. Otherwise than that, have a good day.